Thank you very much indeed. And it's a huge pleasure to be here in uh, Birmingham. I know that um, we have a, uh, a whole array of ministers uh, traveling from around the country uh, to be here in Birmingham campaigning over these last a uh, few hundreds day of days in the run-up to this campaign and then in the 48 days between now and the general election. The Chancellor was here um, this morning to deliver the good words to the Federation of Small Business Annual Conference to say that we will back small businesses to the hilt. And as he spoke, the FTSE 100 index broke through the 7,000 barrier for the first time. So. He must have said something right. Um, the, uh, uh, it, it's also a great pleasure to be here because it is only by making sure that we listen to and support the communities and geographies of the whole country that we can learn what we need to do in the next parliament to make sure that we can keep this recovery and this turnaround of our whole nation on track. So I come from a small business background and I uh, have the great privilege of being the small business minister. Um, but I always feel a bit uh, of a, uh, a, 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 that it is vital for me to listen to people who are in business. Now, I say that and it's obvious in one way, but I feel it particularly acutely because I come from a small business background. My parents ran a small business each of my siblings has started a business themselves. My uncles and aunts have started businesses, but I have not. All I've done is grown up in a small business, and that me makes my family discussions and the discussions around the dinner table particularly acute, because they tell me exactly what is needed. But what it shows is how much we need to listen. And what I'd say is this, in the run-up to this next general election in 48 days' time, we have to get out there and get this message out to the whole of the country. The first part of the message is that things are starting to go in the right direction. We're now, as you said, growing at the fastest rate, not only of any major European country, but of any country in the G7. We've created more jobs in the UK over the past year than the rest of Europe put together and the two million jobs just under that have been created under this government is a testament to the resilience of the British people who, who given the stability at a national level have been able to get out there and create those jobs. And at the same time as that We've seen inequality fall in the UK. We've seen poverty fall in the UK. We've seen the numbers of people from, who are women, from ethnic minority backgrounds, from outside of London starting businesses, all hit record levels. There have been 760,000 new businesses over the last 10 years, and more than 2.2 million jobs created by business. So we've got a record that we can be proud of, but that's the first thing. But I don't think any government gets elected or re-elected on its record. You get re-elected re by having an optimistic vision for the future, and this is the second thing. We have a plan. I would say we're the only party with a plan. The other parties represent chaos. They either don't know what their plan is, or they have a plan that is particularly unpleasant, or they're the Green Party who don't quite know what their plan is, and it depends which one of them you talk to. But we've got a plan to make it easier to create jobs, to make it easier to go about your business, but also to make sure that every part of the UK and every community in the UK can support that and benefit from that growth. So that's the second thing. We've got a plan for the future, it's an optimistic vision, and we're gonna go out and make it a reality. But the third thing, and this is what I think is the most important, is that this is underpinned by strong values. These are the values of backing people who work and want to get on. This is the values of backing people who want to make something of their lives. If people put in, then we should back them so that the system gives them rewards. 
And this is what ties together the Conservative Party and the people in this room and the whole of the Indian diaspora who share our values, family values, values of hard work, values of self-reliance, of getting out there and making it happen. And we have to do the work to persuade everybody in this nation, everybody in this nation, whatever their background, whatever their community, that these are the values that are going to make Britain great again. And I think that we can do that. And I think that we have a couple of people who are going to help us. They're called Ed Balls and Ed Miliband. <laughs> now, I don't much like negative campaigning. And I think that politics should be about the virtuous and the positive. But it is virtuous to point out that this country would be infinitely worse off if it were run by the two people who got us into this mess in the first place with their friend Gordon Brown. The British people as a whole have put huge sacrifices in place over this last five years to turn this country around and we don't want to let two men ruin it and it's our job to stop that from happening. So we've got to get out there, we've got to fight hard, we've got to campaign hard, we've got to persuade people of our values and of the moral mission that we're on to give everybody in this country the best possible start in life, to give everybody the opportunity of work, to make sure that we have a strong and secure economy and to make sure that we live in a Britain that we can all be proud to call home. That's what we've got to do over these next 48 day days. My goodness, 48 days. And I hope that we have your support in getting out there, getting the message out and making it happen. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>